welcome back to my channel. Now, because we're getting into winter, I thought to make a winter inspired cake, complete with a marble wrap and some rice paper and ice malt decorations. So this cake has a combination of different techniques, some that I've already covered on my other videos. So if you are new, firstly, welcome. And secondly, then go ahead and check out some of my technical videos, because I may explain more in those videos such as how to get a crumb coated cake, which is what I'm going to start off with. So this is my six inch ready crumb coated cake with Swiss meringue buttercream. This cake design can work pretty much on top of any type of cake, whether you're doing chocolate filled with chocolate ganache or different types of fillings, but I'm just gonna show you a simple vanilla cake just for demonstration purposes. And what I have here is some spare Swiss meringue buttercream. And once again, you can find the recipe and tutorial for this on my channel. And I'm going to start off by coating this entire cake in a decent layer of the Swiss meringue. And at the moment, I don't want to color it, I want to leave it white. So I'm going to take my step palette knife and start applying to the cake. I like starting towards the bottom of the cake and work my way up because it's very easy to forget about that bottom part of the cake, especially where it touches the cake board. So I'm just using my palette knife and going side to side, spreading out that buttercream nice and evenly. And because I've kept the buttercream white, it tends to be a little bit more see-through than if it were color buttercream. So I'm going on with quite a thick layer, about half a centimeter thick. And of course, it also helps that the crumb coat has been setting in the freezer to make it nice and firm before I go on with this layer to make sure no crumbs get in this second layer of buttercream too. And now I can work my way up the sides. And also notice this strange cake action that I'm doing. So even though I'm right-handed, I'm working on the left side of the cake because this is the only way that the palette knife remains straight. If it's on this side, it's not going to be as straight because the handle gets in the way and there's no doing this either. So you always want to go over in this position and apply the buttercream like so. And now for the top. So I'm just going to spoon on a heat tablespoon and spread it out with my palette knife. So again, just using the sides of the palette knife, spreading it out and turning the turntable to achieve a nice even layer of buttercream. And now it's time to make this layer of buttercream nice and smooth. So I'm going to use this outside edge of the palette knife. I'm going to place it like so and turn the cake. So only that side of the palette knife is touching the cake. And as a result, I achieve a super flat surface. Scrape off any excess I have into my bowl. Now just one or two times through the middle. So the top is nice and flat. And what you can also see that I've done, I've almost pushed this buttercream over the edges of the cake, which means they're going to start catching when I go over with my scraper. But I now no longer call this a scraper, I call it a smoother because otherwise people scrape off too much buttercream rather than smoothing it out, which is exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to hold this towards the bottom of the scraper or smoother and make sure this bottom corner touches the bottom corner of the cake and very softly go against the cake and turn. So at the moment, I'm not actually applying a lot of pressure. I'm just keeping the scraper sturdy. And as I rotate and rotate, the buttercream gets redistributed around the cake and starts to even out by itself. So it's all about how you hold the scraper. Now I do have a little bit of excess built up, so I'm just gonna get rid of this and go on again. So I think people get quite carried away with this action and they end up starting to scrape off too much. So firstly, it's good to go on with a decent layer so you're at less risk of scraping too much and revealing the cake. But also don't think of this as taking off any buttercream. You just want to smooth this out. So I'm going over again to get rid of those small air bubbles rather than take off buttercream. And every time I come off the cake too, I come off with a movement to avoid getting a line in the buttercream. And I always say plain white cake is one of the hardest cakes to do because there's nowhere to hide. So I'm happy with that. So what I wanna do is actually leave these corners and cut them off when they're cold to get a super sharp corner. So I'm going to put this cake back in the freezer to get really cold before I cut off the corners. And whilst it's in the freezer, I'm going to prepare some decorations. 
So the first decoration I'm going to make are some rice paper sails. Now you may have already seen this on my rice paper sail cake tutorial, but um, I'm going to do it slightly differently. And the main difference is that I'm actually going to dry them out in the oven to speed up the process. So rather than leaving the rice paper out to dry for a few hours, you can actually just put it into an 100 degrees Celsius oven on a fan heat for about 45 minutes. And I'm also going to be making some slightly different shapes. So for the rice paper sails, you obviously need some rice paper, some non-stick mats and some pegs to hold things in place. Because I'm going to put them in the oven, I've got some oven trays and you need a plate, a bowl, or in my case, a cake tin of water. Now it's totally up to you if you want to color the water, but because I want to keep this a very frosty winter scene, I'm going to leave it white because the rice paper dries slightly translucent and it gives that frosty feel. So I'm not going to color the water, but if you wanted to color it, then you can do it now before you soak the rice paper. So I'm going to grab my first sheet of rice paper and place it in the water and let that soak for about 30 seconds. It's pretty obvious when it's ready, it's extremely loose and it kind of folds everywhere. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but I will prepare my non-stick mat. And I've actually also got these metal rings because I want to shape these slightly. And because these can go in the oven, I'm actually going to lay the mat over them to create this kind of curvature shape with the rice paper. So the rice paper is ready and you can see that it's absorbed all the water and I'm actually gonna tear this one in half because I don't want the pieces too big. You can see how easy it is to tear as well. And then drape over the paper where the curve is. And there are a few folds in there which I quite like because it will add layers which means you'll get darker shades and lighter shades and place it over the mat in exactly the shapes that you want. But don't overthink it too much because they kind of fall organically and when it looks more natural, I think it looks better. I'll go in with one more piece and see wherever there's space. So obviously you don't want this too wet because it's gonna take longer to dry. So I'm just going to try and drain off as much water as possible before putting it on the mat. And then I'll lay a couple of pieces flat as well. And I've got a nice variation of larger pieces and smaller pieces here too. So you probably can't see much because it is translucent paper, but the paper is on there and it's sturdy because it's wet, so it's sticking to the mat. And I'm going to put this in the low oven. If you don't have a heat proof shape like I have, all you need to do is grab your mat, place the paper over, and then you can shape it using pegs like this, for example. So you don't have to place it over cylinders. I just did this the last time that I made these and I really liked the effect, but you can also drape them over a cake tin if you want. So I'm gonna put these in the oven for about 45 minutes until they're completely dry. So my second decoration is going to be some small isomalt pieces. So isomalt is a substitute for sugar, although it doesn't caramelize and it's very popular to make some sort of sugar decorations because it doesn't dissolve in air like sugar does. So it comes in a white powder, but you can also get larger pellets. I have the powder here and I'm going to put that straight into a pan on the heat. And as it melts, it will become translucent. So you can do this in the microwave, but I prefer doing it over a pan because I can watch it. So it's on quite a high heat because it does take some time. But the beauty of this is that you can stir it and it won't crystallize like sugar does. And you could do many sorts of decorations with this. So while this is melting, I'm just gonna show you what I've got prepared. And it's once again, another non-stick mat. I've also got a tray because this can get quite hot and so I wanna protect my surface. And this time I am going to use the clothes pegs to hold the mat in place once I poured on the isomalt. But for now, I want to prepare it by placing it out flat and the isomalt has started to melt. And when isomalt melts, it becomes a translucent liquid. So once again, because of the theme we're going for, I'm going to leave this lot white, but then I'm going to go and put some blue in another batch and create different shades of the isomalt. But you can do any color you want. So now all the isomalt has melted. It is a clear liquid. And so from here, I'm just going to pour onto the mat a few splodges at a time. I want to keep them separate and I'm kind of making up the shapes at the moment. 
but I want these kind of long, almost icicle sorts of shapes. And I'm going to move it just to the side and see if it becomes more of an organic shape. And because I want a little bit of curvature, I'm going to peg the mat. So I'm going to leave them to set like this, which will only take five or 10 minutes, not as long as the rice paper. And once they're dry, they would have kept this shape. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing with a little bit of blue. So this buttercream has completely solidified, which means I can now get my sharp knife and cut away these corners. So because this buttercream is going to be extra cold, I don't want to put it back in my soft buttercream bowl. So I've got a spare bowl here that I'm going to put all of these off cuts to. I do like doing this a little bit more gradually rather than going straight away into the same height because you can rip the buttercream. And it's happened to me a couple of times, so I prefer doing it gradually taking off piece by piece. This really is the best trick of getting sharp corners. So if I'm not doing drips, because drips kind of hide the corners, I usually do this technique. There you go, super, super sharp corners. So essentially this is a blank canvas and you can go on with any design you want, but I want to do this marble wrap. So while I'm waiting, I'm going to put this back in the fridge because I don't want the buttercream getting soft. Otherwise, the marble won't sit on it. I want to keep the buttercream nice and hard. It doesn't necessarily need the freezer again, but I don't want this getting soft. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge whilst I prepare the marble buttercream. So the majority is left white. So what I'm going to do is color one of the bowls a very strong blue because it's good to have some contrast. And then to make the medium shade of blue, I'm actually going to put a little bit of the dark blue buttercream into the other bowl and mix that through. Because if I go in with color, I might make it too dark. This way I know I'll get a lighter shade. So two shades of blue and then I've got the white. And now I'm going to grab my cake because I'm going to use a piece of acetate to wrap around it, but I need to mark out exactly where I want to put the buttercream and I can't do that without the cake. So what I have here is an A4 acetate clear sheet. Now you can use this same technique, whether you're just going around the bottom, whether you're covering the whole cake, but I wanna do a sort of diagonal side wrap, which could even come above the top of the cake too. So I'm going to just place this against the cake and I can see that I don't want to go more than here and I want to do about half the cake, which is about the length of this acetate sheet. So where I've pressed, I can see that is the top of the cake, so now I know. I can move the cake to the sides and place the acetate sheet down. And now I'm going to create the marble effect straight on the acetate. So I'm going to grab my palette knife and take a scoop of white buttercream, a little bit of dark blue, and then a little bit of the light blue. So all three shades are on my palette knife and now I'm just going to press it on to the acetate. So there's no real direction how to do this, but what you want to do is continuously pick up all three shades and press it onto the acetate. Now without ruining the surprise, what happens is that it naturally marbles on the other side of the acetate and that is what you're gonna see from the outside of the cake. So I'm going to fill up this area on the acetate and continue placing the buttercream down. So even if you start mixing up in the bowls, you can get more of a marble mix on your palette knife before you press it onto the acetate, which will also add to the effect. Just obviously be careful that the color overrides the white. It doesn't matter if it blends on this side because you're not gonna see this side once it's on the cake. So you're kind of working backwards. You're thinking of what's on the underneath of this acetate rather than what you can see. So as I said, I want this kind of diagonal shape going on, which is why I've done more of an arch shape rather than a strip, but it does work with a strip too. 
And then once you're happy with the area that you've covered, it's now important to make this as even as possible because the cake surface is even and you want it to match up perfectly. So with my palette knife, I'm just going to go forwards and backwards along the surface of this without trying to move it around too much because I've already created the marble pattern underneath. And I'm gonna have a sneak peek of what it looks like from underneath. Wow. This is gonna look really good. So now it's time to place it onto the cake. So I'm going to bring my cake closer. And this is where it can, well, not mess up, but get a bit fiddly, is you have to actually pick this piece of acetate up, which can be a little bit heavy because of the buttercream, and place it against the cake. Oh wow, I can already see how amazing this marble effect looks. And I want to keep it as straight as possible, so I'm going to already start rubbing it into place before I push the rest of the acetate around the cake. So what can happen, which is slightly happening on mine but I'm not too concerned, is that the acetate will start to lose shape. Maybe the buttercream isn't completely even. So try now, even with your hands or with a scraper, just try and get it as flat as possible and push that buttercream to the cake because you want that stuck on there. Or even reintroduce the scraper because it will touch the whole length of the cake at the same time. So once you're happy with the application, as tempting as it is to take off the acetate now, this has to go back in the freezer because this buttercream has to be completely cold. Otherwise, if you take the acetate off now, the buttercream will come off too. So this is going back in the freezer. If you don't have space in your freezer, then just put it in the fridge until the buttercream is firm before we can take off the acetate. So while I'm waiting for my marble buttercream to set, I just wanted to show you what the rice paper was doing. It's completely dried out, so these come off the mat super easily and hold their shape. And you can see these lovely folds that I was talking about when I was creating them. And then we've also got the ice knot. So the clear ones literally look like pieces of ice. So I think these are going to look really, really nice on the cake. We've got all sorts of shapes going on here. Lots of swirls and organic shapes going on. Now the blue colour is quite dark. I probably would have preferred it if it was a little bit lighter. So I may not be putting them on the cake, but it's interesting to see the difference. It almost looks like a splash of water itself. So I'm going to keep the ice melt to one side, but what I'm going to do with the rice paper, just to add another dimension to it, is actually colour the edges of the paper. So what I've got here is some edible lustre dust mixed with a little bit of vodka to make it a paint. I'm going to go around and colour the very edges of the rice paper just with a fine paintbrush. And this will just enhance the shape even more once it's on the cake. It's just a really slight touch which I think makes all the difference. So the buttercream on the outside has totally set, which means I can now peel away the acetate really carefully. You can see the acetate comes right off and leaves that beautiful marbled effect. So you can get some pockets of buttercream where it may have still stuck to the acetate. And so what I like doing, very lightly going over with the scraper. However, if you go over too many times, you're at risk of blending the buttercream. So be careful if you do do this. But just a couple of times over, I'm going to remove almost that first layer of buttercream and smoothen it out. So the second it starts to feel a little bit soft, stop scraping because otherwise you're just going to blend the buttercream and ruin the marble effect. So because the buttercream is cold, I can actually paint on it. So I'm going to use the same paint as I used for the rice paper and paint over the edge of this buttercream to really enhance this shape. So that nice bit of shimmer has just added an extra detail. And speaking of detail, I've actually put the remaining buttercream in a piping bag with a star piping tip to add some more details as well as help stick the remaining decorations. So now it's time to decorate. And of course you want to choose your front. So I'm gonna choose 
between this side or this side. I think I'm going to go for this side because I like how the marble buttercream is falling down on this side. And I think what I'm going to do is a sort of crown cluster of all the different decorations which will give it some more height, texture and some colour variations too. So I'm going to start by putting some buttercream on the top. So once again, this will add to the decoration, but also help stick the rice paper and isomalt. And the star tip still makes it look a little bit wintry. It reminds me of like little blobs of ice or something like that. And now I can grab the rice paper and I don't think there's any particular way of doing this apart from just being bold and confident. So this is a really nice large shape, as is this one. And then I've got these pieces of isomalt, which just bring another texture. These smaller details look really nice coming down the side of the cake. And I'm going to go ahead and put a couple at the bottom too. Okay, I think I am going to go for the blue. I think it needs that slight contrast in colour. There. I am happy that I went for the blue in the end because I just really think it completes it. I love the flow of the rice paper and isomalt. It gives tons of textures and not forgetting that beautiful marble buttercream too that we achieved with the acetate. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Please try this out yourself. You can try all of these different decorations in any colour, so it's suitable for any event. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you do try it out yourself, please tag me at George's Cakes on Instagram because I would love to see your creations. In the meantime, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment below with other tutorials that you want to see. And in the meantime, we'll see you very soon.